Hi, folks. I want to uh, talk to you about something this morning that I think is really important. I was reading through some of them in my notes that I I kept my notes in my Bible like this so I could just hold my Bible and walk around. And when I preached in nine different churches, uh pastored a lot of churches, but I'm old and I don't need to preach anymore. I don't need to sing anymore. I, I've done all that all my life. <laughs> I understand, you know, but you know what? I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to share a little bit of the good news of the gospel uh, to you every day. So I thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to be a part of this church here at Bellevue Heights. Uh, there's my shirt I have on. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Bellevue Heights Church. I have red, red on today. Black, red, white, and green, and blue. I have all those colors. Anyway, uh, Philippians, uh, I might going to lose some of my friends. I, I don't want to because I, I must preach the whole counsel of God when I, when I speak. And, uh, one of the things that, uh, that the Lord has laid on my heart and just recently, I was, I was looking through this stuff and, uh, it says, learn in Ephesians, uh, it says, uh, Philippians, I'm not Ephesians. So here I go again. Philippians. 10, 13, 4, 10, 13, 10 through 13, uh, Philippians 4. How grateful I am and how I praise the Lord that you are helping me again. I know you have always been anxious to send what you could, but for a while you didn't, you, you didn't have the chance. Not that I was ever in need, for now I know to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the the secret of contentment in every situation, whether it be a full stomach or hunger, plenty or want. For I can do everything God asks me to with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. This is that's Philippians four, ten through thirteen. And then uh, I wrote down some things, or, or I typed it out here. Uh, learn to enjoy things without owning them. In other words, uh, part of the part of the process of being a poor preacher in little churches is you just you don't own a lot of things. You just and I have never really owned a lot of things. I'm, I'm trying to pay off my car right now, and. Uh, and that's that's one of the cars that we have, and that's important. But anyway, that, that, it'll happen. God always takes care of us. So in, in, here's what it says. Owning things is an obsession in our culture. If we own it, we feel we can control it. And if we can control it, we feel it will give us more pleasure. The idea is an illusion Many things in life can be enjoyed without possessing or controlling them. Sharing things, share things, enjoy the beach without feel, feeling you have to buy a piece of it. Enjoy public parks and libraries. This was written by Robert uh, Richard Foster. And then uh, E. Stanley Jones said something very good too. Let me quote that. Money is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master or taskmaster. If it gets on top of you and you get under it, you, uh, you are its slave forever. And, uh, that was E. Stanley Jones. So, uh, money can buy you medicine, someone wrote, but not health. Money can buy a house, but not a home. Money can buy companionship, but not friendship. Money can buy entertainment, but not happiness. Money can buy food, but not an appetite. Money can buy a bed, but not sleep. Money can buy an agreement, but not peace. Money can buy a book, but not knowledge. Money can buy pleasures, 
but not a purpose. Money can buy good life, but not eternal life. And then in uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and the first, first one through five, verses one through five, it says, you may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last days, it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be uh, hard-headed and never give in to others. They will be content liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immorality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will be, be, betray their friends. They will be hot-headed, puffed up, and with pride, and prefer good times to worshiping God. They will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken by people like that. Anyway, folks, I want you to be encouraged. This is, this is, uh, everything that we have one day will be gone and will be gone. And this getting old thing is a trip. I'm telling you what, it, it's, it's really something. I pick up Elise uh, Lou uh, every day, uh, just about every day, and uh, take her to do something that she wants to do. And she's got Parkinson's and she's having such a difficult time. And bless her heart, uh, she's, she just turned 87. We took her to dinner at uh, the Olive Garden and uh, my wife and I. And uh, you know what? It's, it's, this, this getting old thing is, is part of looking forward to heaven. And uh, so I pray that you will enjoy your life right here. And it doesn't have anything to do with how rich you are. It has to do with what God's blessing is for you and for your, your family. And uh, so I'm, I'm praying that you will be encouraged today. I'm so thankful that I have a church that cares about me and that uh, lets me be a part of their uh, visitation and things like that. I, I am so blessed of God, and I thank you so much for that. And God bless you today and make you a blessing. Thanks for listening.